Okay, welcome to another simple engineering snippet. In this instructional video, we will be uh, calculating the uh, heat transfer through a composite wall and determining interface temperature. Uh, we are going to uh, be deriving the necessary equations and approach to utilize a thermal circuit. Okay, let's start with a single slab, and we're doing this sort of as a building block to be able to uh, tackle the uh, the more complex problem. And uh, while we're doing this, we are going to uh, find uh, an expression for the heat transfer rate through the slab. And in so doing, we'll be able to determine the equation for thermal resistance for heat conduction through a slab. All right, so we start with Laplace's equation. Uh, this equation tells us that it's one dimensional heat transfer, uh, steady state, and with no heat generation. And since it's one dimensional, let's call that in the x direction. So we obtain the uh, second derivative of temperature with respect to x. And let's go ahead and integrate that once and then introduce the integration constant C1. Integrating it again, we get an equation for a straight line as expected. And we have two integration constants. And luckily, we do have two boundary conditions to specify temperatures uh, on the surfaces. And so uh, we can uh, plug that in and determine the uh, integration constants as so. If you'd like, you can uh, check that if you plug in x is equal to 0, we do return uh, Ta. And if you turn in plug in x is equal to L, we do return uh, T bravo. Okay, well, that's the uh, temperature distribution through the uh, slab. Now let's use Fourier's law to find the uh, heat transfer through this uh, slab. So Fourier's law says that, well, the heat flux is equal to minus times the conductivity times the uh, derivative of temperature with respect to x. And in this situation, it's a straight line. So we know that minus the uh, derivative of temperature with respect to x is equal to the quantity T alpha minus T bravo over L. And so we can plug that into Fourier's law and obtain the equation that the heat flux is equal to conductivity times a T alpha minus T bravo over L as shown. And we can multiply both sides by the uh, area and obtain that the heat transfer rate is equal to this equation. Okay, well, that's great. And so now we actually know the uh, heat transfer rate through this slab. But uh, if we were to apply this to uh, a multi component composite wall with two or three, four slabs, that can get quite complex. So let's uh, manipulate this equation and this will allow us to uh, determine what the uh, thermal resistance is for conduction through this slab geometry. Here it is manipulated a little bit and let's go ahead and simplify that so that the heat transfer rate is equal to change in temperature divided by the unknown uh, resistance for heat conduction. Well, this equation looks a lot like Ohm's law in electrical circuits and where now the uh, heat transfer rate is analogous to the current. The uh, driving uh, potential for current is a change in voltage and the uh, driving uh, potential, potential for heat transfer is a change in temperature. And they both have resistance in the denominator. Uh, but in our equation, the denominator is this grouping of length over the conductivity times the area. And so that's how we define our thermal resistance through the heat conduction is uh, through by equating these equations. So let's go ahead and build our thermal circuit. So we start off with a known temperature T alpha, add in the resistance through the slab, which is L over Ka, and that takes us to temperature Bravo. And so quickly we can uh, write down our thermal Ohm's law and calculate the heat transfer. Now this equation will be used, will be also useful as long as our uh, resistances are in series, then we just add up all the resistances in the uh, denominator, just like we would in an electrical circuit for a series electrical circuit. So let's return to our original problem. And uh, we are supplied with some additional data, including the uh, length of each and the conductivities of slab one and slab two. And to keep it simple, we're gonna say that the cross-sectional area is just one meter square. I should also note that we are assuming perfect thermal contact between slab one and slab two. And uh, that way we do not have to worry about a gap conductance or a resistance due to the gap. All right, so again, additional information. We are uh, assuming a, a perfect contact between the slabs. Again, steady state, no heat generation, and just like before, one dimensional heat transfer. Let's set up our thermal circuit, knowing that the uh, resistance, the thermal resistance to the heat conduction is L over Ka. And so we start off on the left hand side at 1200 degrees, add in the resistance for slab one, and that takes us to the interface temperature between slabs one and slab two reach the resistor for slab two. And then that takes us to the temperature on the right-hand side of 103 degrees Celsius. 
let's go ahead and calculate the uh, resistance for slab one, 0 0.308 degrees Celsius per watt. Do a similar calculation for slab two, and we get 0 0.375 degrees Celsius per watt. And now let's uh, substitute this into our Ohm's law for a thermal circuit. And notice in the denominator, we add the two series resistors. And we obtain that the heat flow is uh, 1,567.3 watts. Okay, well, let's work on finding the uh, interface temperature. So we already know a lot about this circuit. We already calculated the, uh, the values for the resistors. And we know the amount of heat transfer passing through the circuit. And just like in electrical circuit, I, if I know the current and I know the resistance, I can multiply those together to find the uh, voltage drop or change across the resistor. And I can do the same thing for a thermal circuit. I already know the heat transfer. I know the resistance. And so I can find the temperature drop of both across both or either of uh, these resistors. I'm interested in the interface temperature, so I've chosen to start from the uh, left-hand side at 1,200 degrees. The delta T is equal to the transfer rate times the resistance of slab number one. And we do that to solve for the interface temperature. It comes out to be 717.3 degrees Celsius. All right, so that was a pretty simple, straightforward example. Hope it was a good review and you found it useful. Uh, and please uh, like and subscribe, and more importantly, have a great day.